Well, today we're going to be studying about complex numbers. Did you know that there is uh, numbers besides the real number system that we've been talking about? We're going to learn about imaginary numbers. So there's a complex number i such that i squared is equal to a negative 1. The relation i squared equals negative 1 uses the commutative, associative, and distributive properties. Today we're going to be attending to precision in our mathematical practices. Previously, you've simplified square roots. Now you're going to perform operations with pure imaginary numbers. And you're going to perform operations with complex numbers. We have four new vocabulary words. There is the imaginary unit, pure imaginary number, complex number, and complex conjugates. The imaginary unit, I, is defined to be i squared is equal to negative 1. The number i is the principal square root of negative 1. That is, i is equal to the square root of negative 1. Now, previously, we haven't been finding the uh, square root of negative numbers. We knew that they, the answer was not a real number. The pure imaginary numbers are square roots of negative real numbers. So let's look at what this means. We are to simplify the square root of a negative 28. Well, we can uh, simplify this to say this is a square root of negative 1 times 2 squared times 7, right? 4 times 7 is 28, and then to get the negative 28 is a negative 1. So we can put each one of these under their own radical. And the square root of negative 1 is the same thing as i. When I was, this is the imaginary unit. 2 squared, the square root of 2 squared is 2, and that leaves a square root of 7. So we would write this 2i times the square root of 7. We put the i behind that coefficient. Okay, let's look at another one. We're going to simplify the square root of a negative 32. Well, it's a negative 1, since it's a negative number, times 4 squared times 2. is 16 times 2, is it not? So we put them each under their own radical. Square root of negative 1 is i. The square root of 4 squared is 4 times the square root of 2, or 4i square root of 2. Time for you to check your progress. So simplify the square root of negative 50. Very good. 5i square root of 2. So negative 50 is negative 1 times 5 squared times 2. Put them each under their own radical, you get 5i square root of 2. How about this one? It's a negative 1 times 9 times 5, or 3 squared. So 3i square root of 5. Very good. Now, the commutative and associative properties of multiplication hold true for pure imaginary numbers. So we have a negative 3i times 2i. So a negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, and i times i is i squared. However, i squared is equal to a negative 1. So we have negative 6 times a negative 1, which will give us a positive 6. Simplify the square root of negative 12 times the square root of negative 2. So we'd have a negative 1 times 12 times a square root of negative 2 times 2, which would be i radical 12 times i square root of 2. i times i is i squared. 12 times 2 is 24. 24, we can break down. This would be 2 squared times square root of 6, so we can pull out that 2. So negative 1 times 2 times square root of 6, or negative 2 square root of 6. Okay, time for you to check your progress. So pause for a moment, work the problem, then come back. Okay, 3 times 5 is 15. i times i is i squared. i squared is the same thing as negative 1. 15 times negative 1, negative 15. How about this one? Negative 
negative 2 times negative 6. We've got i times the square root of 2 times i times the square root of 6. So we have i squared. We're going to pull out a 2 because it's 12, so 4 times 3, 4 is 2 squared. So negative 2, square root of 3. Now you can solve some quadratic equations by using the square root property. That's similar to a difference of squares. The sum of squares can be factored over the complex numbers. So we have our original equation. If we subtract 20 from both sides, then divide both sides by 5, we have y squared is equal to a negative 4. So if we take the square root of both sides, we've got y is equal to the uh, positive or negative square root of negative 4. So this uh, 4 is 2 squared times i, so plus or minus 2i. So y is equal to plus or minus 2i. Check your progress and see what you get. So we're going to subtract 50 from both sides, divide both sides by 2, so then we have x squared is equal to 25. Take the square root of both sides, so x, square, x is going to equal to plus or minus 5i. Now we're going to look at some operations with complex numbers. Now, um, Let's look at this. We've got all this math ease up here. You can uh, pause for a moment and read it. Or we can look at these examples. Uh, since 5 is a real number and 2i is a pure imaginary number, these terms are not like terms. And they cannot be combined. This type of expression is called a complex number. Find the values of x and y that make the equation 2x plus yi equal to negative 14 minus 3i true. Okay, so we want, we want what will make it true. Now, two complex numbers are equal if and only if their real parts are equal and their imaginary parts are equal. Okay, so we're going to set the real parts equal to each other and, we're, and the imaginary parts equal to each other. So 2x and negative 14 are the real parts. So we're going to say, say 2x is equal to negative 14. And then we're going to say, oh, we're going to solve. x is equal to negative 7. Then the imaginary parts, y is equal to a negative 3. So our answer is x is equal to negative 7 and y is equal to negative 3. So time for you to check your progress. So pause for a moment and then come back and check your answer. So did you end up with 3x is equal to 15? So divide both sides by 3x is equal to 5. And then negative y is equal to 2. When you divide both sides by a negative, you're going to end up with x is equal to 5 and y is equal to negative 2. Very good. Now, the commutative, associative, and distributive properties of multiplication and addition hold true for complex numbers. To add or subtract complex numbers, you're going to combine like terms. That is, combine the real parts, and then combine the imaginary parts. So we've got uh, 3 plus 5i plus the quantity of 2 minus 4i. So we're going to add the real parts, the 3 plus 2, and we're going to add the imaginary parts, 5 minus 4i. 3 plus 2 is 5, and 5 minus 4 is 1i. So our answer is 5 plus i. Let's look at another one of those. So we're going to add our real parts together, 4 minus 3. Now here's the little trick. This is a minus in there. So we've got negative 6 minus a negative 7, which would make that plus 7. So we end up with 1 plus i. Okay, check your progress. So pause for a moment and work this, and then come back and check your answer. Very good. 
Our real parts are 2 plus 3, which would be 5. And our imaginary parts, 6 plus 4 is 10i. That one was pretty easy, wasn't it? Now let's look at this one with a negative, where we're subtracting. So we have 3 minus a negative 2, which would be 3 plus 2 would be 5. And then 2 minus 5 is going to give us a negative 3i. Complex numbers are used with electricity. And in these problems, J usually represents the imaginary unit. In a circuit with alternating current, the voltage, current, and impedance, or the hindrance to current, can be represented by complex numbers. To multiply these numbers, use the FOIL method. Okay. So the formula is E is equal to impedance times Z. Okay. So we have 1 plus 4 joules times 3 minus 6 joule ohms. That's how you pronounce that, O-H-M-S, ohms. Use the FOIL method, 1 times 3, 1 times negative 6, 4J times 3, 4J times a negative 6J. Do the math. Now we've got some like terms right here that we can add together. Negative 6j plus 12j gives us 6j. j squared is the same thing as i squared. It's a negative 1. So we end up with a positive 24 plus 3 gives us our 27 plus 6j. So the answer, the voltage is 27 plus 6j volts. Okay, using that same kind of process, it's time to check your progress. So using the same formula, I ended up with 1 minus 3j times 3 plus 2j. Did the FOIL method, and you end up with 9 minus 7j when your terms are combined, your like terms. Two complex numbers of the form a plus bi and a minus bi are called complex conjugates. The product of complex conjugates is always a real number, that, and you can use this fact to simplify the quotient of two complex numbers. So what does this mean? Notice we have in, in the denominator 3 plus 2i. So its conjugate would be 3 minus 2i. You just use the opposite, the opposite sign. Whatever you multiply the bottom by, you also have to multiply the top by, because we're multiplying by 1, which in essence does not change the value of our expression. So then 5i times 3 is 15i. 5i times negative 2i is negative 10i squared. 3 times 3 is 9. And because this is a plus or minus, you know your middle terms are going to vanish. That would be 6i minus 6i. So you don't even have to worry about the two middle terms. When you use a conjugate, multiply the first times each other and the last. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4i squared. I squared changes to a negative 1, so that's going to make that a plus 4. 9 plus 4 is 13. This I squared is a negative 1 times a negative 10 makes it positive 10. Then we're going to write it in the form A plus BI. So A is 10 over 13. That's the ones without the imaginary number. And then 15I, or 15 over 13I. Written in the format A plus BI. Let's look at another problem. 5 plus 2i. Okay, all we're trying to do is get rid of the i in the denominator. So if we multiply by i over i, we can get rid of that i in the, the imaginary number in the denominator because it gives us i squared. Now this i, 5 times i is 5i. i times i is i squared. And then 2i times i is 2i squared. Now the i squareds are equal to a negative 1. So 5i minus 1 over 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. We're going to write it in the form a plus bi. So negative 1 over negative 2 is a positive 1 half minus 5 over 2i. Okay, time to check your progress. So pause for a moment and work the problem, then come back and check your answer. 
Okay, we're going to multiply by 1 minus i over 1 minus i. I end up with 3i minus 3i squared over 1 minus i squared. That will give me 3i plus 3 over 2, and when we rewrite it, it's 3 halves plus 3 halves i. Let's try one more. What would you multiply this by? Well, I'd multiply it by i over i. I end up with 3i plus 2i squared over 2i squared. When I simplify my i squareds, I end up with 3i minus 2 in the numerator and a negative 2 in the denominator. When I write it in the format a, which I'd have negative 2 over negative 2, that's going to give me a positive 1, minus 3 halves i. Very good. You're ready to begin your assignment.